And St. Louis County Prosecutor Bob McCullough expects a verdict in the Michael Brown Jr. grand jury hearing sometime between the middle and the end of November. Leaks from the secret proceedings suggest to many that the white police officer Darren Wilson, who shot and killed the unarmed teenager, could walk free. If that happens, many fear that violence could erupt. I spoke earlier with Captain Ronald Johnson of the Missouri State Highway Patrol. Captain Ron Johnson, welcome to Arise America. Thank you so much for taking some time with us. I imagine that uh, you're always busy, but perhaps particularly so as the St. Louis area gears up for the decision of the grand jury. And that's where I want to start. There's been a lot of discussion and concern that violence and riots will erupt again if the grand jury does not bring down an indictment. How concerned are you about that? Well, I've said before to many people, I'm not going to speculate what the community is going to do. I believe we've got a great community of great people, and I think that uh, that greatness of our community will show through uh, no matter what the decision is from the grand jury. And I appreciate that, and that is so admirable of you to say, but certainly I would think that law enforcement has to be prepared for some, con some contingency. So what is that preparation like? Well, we're definitely preparing to make sure the public is safe, and that's the citizens and visitors to Missouri, and also that the businesses uh, remain whole and that uh, after the grand jury's decision is made, that our community re remains whole and vibrant. Certainly, I believe we all hope that there is no violence, that uh, people can ex exercise their First Amendment right to protest, but do it in, in a nonviolent way. But if there is unrest, this is sort of a chance for law enforcement in the St. Louis area, St. Louis County in particular, for a do-over. How will you respond and advise the at law, local law enforcement officials there to do things differently than the first time around, which was right after my Michael Brown Jr. was shot. Well, you know, the men and women of this region and law enforcement have been professional. Uh, they have maintained life. There has been no loss of life, uh, no serious injuries, and we'll continue to do that. Uh, you know, I've always talked about lessons learned. I think you can always do things better. And I talk about doing your best. If you think you've done your best, then you're setting yourself up to fail. And so we have definitely have had some plans and some conversations. And uh, we'll definitely make sure that this community remains safe. When you were appointed to uh, be the head of the law enforcement response back during those Wyatt riots in August, one of the first things you did, Captain, was you went out on the streets, you rolled up your sleeves, and you walked with the citizens of Ferguson and talked to them. I imagine that that dialogue has continued since then. What are you hearing from the residents in the community? I'm hearing more positive conversation. I'm still hearing conversation that uh, there needs to be some changes made within our community and also within our nation. And so that conversation is still taking place. But I'm also ensuring everybody that their First Amendment rights are going to be protected. And it is that First Amendment right to free speech, free protest that has allowed us to even start a conversation of change. Are you getting the idea, Captain, that the residents are hearing what the officials in Ferguson are saying, whether it's the city council or law enforcement, and that city officials are hearing what the community is saying? I remember those early town meetings just a few weeks ago where there was a lot of shouting, a lot of back and forth. Have things calmed down enough to where there's real meaningful and hopefully productive dialogue going? on? I think the conversations have been transparent. Uh, the conversations have also been measurable. And everybody's sitting down at the table. Uh, the people that are talking are reflective of the community and the whole community. So I think those things are positive things. And those are things that uh, I believe they have to continue well beyond the grand jury decision. They always have to be taking place. Uh, do you have any idea, and I know the grand jury proceedings is a secret, and uh, even if you did know, you couldn't tell us, but do you have an idea, or will you be notified in advance when the grand jury announces their decision about this indictment? Well, I think the prosecuting attorney came out today and said it could be mid-November to late uh, November. And so those are the same things you're hearing is the same thing that uh, we're hearing in the law enforcement community. Take me back. I want to rewind the clock, if I will, when uh, whoever came to you and said, I want to put you in charge of this, it's out of control in Ferguson, and uh, you were placed right in the middle of this, uh, this disturbing unrest. What were those early days like when you got this post? You know, the early days were challenging. Uh, they've been challenging for law enforcement as a whole. Uh, 
but I knew that we could make a difference. And when I say we, I'm talking about myself and, and Chief Dotson of St. Louis City and Chief Belmer of St. Louis County. Uh, you know, our leadership styles are different, but I think those three leadership styles together have made a, a difference. Uh, we have all have uh, grown in our understanding of each other and understanding of this community and understanding of uh, uh, this nation as a whole. Before I let you go, can you talk a little bit? Is there any conflict in you? I mean, you are a son of this city. You are from this community, but yet had to represent law enforcement, which it has been the target of so much frustration and animosity. How have you dealt with this, this conflict or perhaps fine line if there has been one for you? I've told people all the time that the first thing that I am on the totem pole of all the things that involve my life is a man. Uh, the trooper is down on the, on the totem pole. I'm a man, I'm a father, I'm a son, I'm a friend, a lot of other things. And so I stand on myself as a man in that character. Uh, and with that and with my faith in God, uh, I have no conflict. Uh, are there tough days? Uh, being in the middle of the road, yes. Uh, but uh, my faith in, in doing the right thing and attempting to wake up every day and do what's right for this community and, and even for this nation uh, keeps me strong. and, and uh, and, I, and I'll be fine. I know a lot of people are very proud of the role that you've played and the job you've been doing. Missouri Highway Patrol Captain Ron Johnson, thank you so much, sir. We wish you all the very best. Thank you.